Okay, so we're recording. Hey, what's going on guys? Today's video, what are we doing? We're talking about N64. Surprise, surprise. But we're talking about N64 and MIDI files, playing MIDI files on the Nintendo 64 console. So a lot of you are probably saying, whoa, Jer, hang on, N64 doesn't play MIDI files. Well, technically you're right. It's got its own proprietary version of MIDI. So they had to really compress things down or limit them in order to save room, saving ROM space uh, for the games that they were being developed. The most common version of software that was being used by developers in the mid stages of the N64's life cycle was a software package called N64 Sound Tools. And so what that was, it was a piece of software that Nintendo came out with that was targeted at musicians to use. And so it had this fancy Windows software package, a little GUI that was all nice, and it had lots of features for editing, really quite sophisticated in terms of N64 and doing sound development and music development. Um, and it came with a very specialized piece of hardware, which was the N64 Sound Tools development cartridge. It's not exactly where you can just pop over to the corner store and pick one up. You know, you're, it's, they're pretty hard to come by. So a lot of us have been trying to figure out ways, quick ways of being able to test uh, music in terms of MIDI or doing sound effects on the console, doing it very quickly. Um, but it just, things have been, they weren't really that, it wasn't really a quick solution for doing that. But some of us have come out with ways of using the old software and you know a couple of stages of different pieces of software we, we managed to get things working the way we wanted uh, but it was definitely a little bit kind of cumbersome and it wasn't really a speedy way of testing because you had to compile everything and the code and you know it was just a little bit more drawn out than a lot of us you know especially musicians if you know if you're someone that's into that scene of working with midi and writing music you know that's it's not really feasible um, to do it the way that we figured out. But what I actually figured out here is a quick way for us to test MIDI. And we can go from an editing uh, environment, say like a MIDI editor uh, on a modern computer. You can be editing on your software, Windows 10, whatnot, whatever. And you can be editing a MIDI file. And as long as you have a USB interface where you can connect to a modern flash cartridge, I've come out with a quick solution for us to just transfer over just the MIDI track uh, in its compressed form onto a sample sort of preview ROM that I've programmed for us to use. And it takes about 10 to 15 seconds for us to just quickly send over that MIDI file and then go from editing in a, on a modern day MIDI editor to the N64 console playing that MIDI track back for us to hear. Uh, so that's kind of cool. It's, you know, I was like, wow, this is awesome. So I'm going to be showing you guys that and I've, you know, I, I had to work with uh, some of the developers uh, that come out with some of the hardware, like there's the 64 drive uh, flash cartridge. Now, a lot of you that have been in the scene for doing N64 development, that's that was sort of the go-to cartridge, but there's been some, it's been hard to get your hands on one of these, uh, some manufacturing issues. So. Uh, they're, they're actually a little harder to come by. Um, now there is the EverDrive 64 X7 model. If you guys can see that there, sort of a recent release uh, version that has uh, a USB interface on the side. And I actually worked with a couple of guys, with Crix, uh, the, the guy that's actually develops this. Um, I've implemented and requested some changes and he's willing to do that for us so that we can implement this, what we're, what we're trying to test. Uh, so it should be available in the next rev of the software. Uh, but in the meantime, I worked pretty closely with uh, Fraser, uh, who is a, one, a, a member of the N64 Brew uh, Discord channel. Uh, and he's a member there, he's a really talented programmer and uh, developer working on homebrew and whatnot. And uh, he approached me uh, because he saw some of the requests that I was making to Cricks on Twitter and some of the you know, specific uh, versions of the functions that I was looking for to get this to work with the EverDrive X7. And he said, hey, Jerry, you know, if 
you know, you want me to implement those changes just so you can test something and see if it works. He said, I can probably do that for you. So I was like, you know, awesome, fantastic. Uh, you know, working on some C-sharp code. Uh, that was sort of his forte. Um, and so he implemented and compiled some uh, versions of the software for me to test, and we got it to work, which is awesome. So a shout out to Fraser, thanks there, bud, uh, for helping me get that working, it's awesome. And that's what we've got here today. I've got some software that you guys can download, and you can implement it using either the 64 drive uh, version 2 hardware, uh, or you can use the EverDrive X7 uh, with the software that I've got here. And eventually that'll be updated. The links that I'll provide, I'll update them as uh, Crix releases the official release. And so everything will be updated regardless, but it'll be in the description of this video. So you can go there and get the files that you need. So let's hop over uh, to the software. I'm gonna show you guys what I've got implemented for us to test uh, MIDI tracks on the N64 console. Let's check it out. Okay, so in the description of this video, there's a link uh, there for you that I've placed for the software that you're gonna use. And this is a file called uh, btc n 64 mediplayerzip And so you go ahead and download that. And uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna double click and you're gonna extract that to your local C folder. So on the C drive, it'll be called btc n 64 midi and within that folder, you've got uh, three different folders. So you don't have to worry about this bottom folder, MIDI Bank Gen. That's actually gonna be in my next video. And that's where we're gonna be creating um, specific samples that we're gonna use for our MIDI files to use. But then you have a specific folder for each version of the development cartridges that you're gonna be using, whether that's the 64 drive hardware version two, uh, with USB support or the EverDrive 64 and that uh, is the X7 model uh, that again also has uh, USB support. Uh, so we're going to sample both of these versions. I'm going to show you guys both versions. Uh, so to start off, let's do the 64 drive. So what you're going to do is you're going to double click on that folder and you've got some files here. Uh, you have MIDI files, which has some sample MIDI files, as well as some of the, the old school SGI audio tools that we're gonna use. But again, you don't have to worry about that because my batch files are gonna run all that in the background. So you don't really have to focus on that. Um, however, if you're someone that's in more like in development, you, you're gonna be able to analyze my batch files and see exactly what I've done. So you feel free to do that as well. Um, now the main file that we're using here in terms of MIDI is this sort of key edit MIDI file. And that is MIDI edit uh, .mid. And as long as your MIDI editor always has this loaded with whatever MIDI data that you want to use, all the different tracks and the music that you've created, as long as you save that temporarily to this file, um, my batch files are going to take that and whatever media information is stored in that file, it's going to quickly stream it over to the N64 and then play it on the console for you to check out and listen uh, for previewing. And you have the default ROMs. These are, there's actually two versions of sequence players, MIDI players that I've created. There's one that's a compact uh, sequence MIDI player and also a standard MIDI player. So the real difference is just in how the information was compressed. Um, no doubt the compact version uh, had a, a compression that it used for all of its MIDI information to save space. Uh, so there are smaller files and then there's standard MIDI. So it's up to you. You can sort of pick and choose which one you want to use. Uh, but with modern day flash cartridges, you don't really have to be too concerned uh, in terms of space. Um, so there's those two files. And then you have the batch files that we're gonna use. You got some zip files here, which is just for backup purposes in case you need to restore if you're going in and you're editing these batch files, which I think a lot of you guys might do that who are into the development uh, side of things. And I've got one set up for uh, NTSC and then one set up for PAL. Now this is because uh, just to tweak out any, uh, you know, any differences between the two versions uh, in the regions. But again, the NTSC batch files work perfectly. So let's just go, I'm gonna show you guys that now. 
And so these are the two versions. So we've got the compact MIDI player and the standard MIDI player. And so depending on which one you run, uh, you'll implement those for your playing your MIDI file. So let's go back to the MIDI tracks and let's open up this into our MIDI editor. Uh, so now I've got this sort of basic generic open source MIDI editor that I'll be using to show you guys and you I'll provide the link as well in the description for you to use if you don't have a MIDI editor of your choice. Uh, this one I've chosen just because it's open source and it has everything that we need for running both the compact um, MIDI files and as well as the standard uh, MIDI file format. It, you know, it, it, it'll provide all the features that we need. So again, the link is in the description. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up our MIDI edit file uh, with MIDI edit. So here it is. And this is again, it's just, this is just like a scale uh, test MIDI track uh, cycling through three different instruments uh, just for us to test to make sure that our uh, player is working. So as long as you have this loaded as the underscore MIDI edit dot mid file uh, within the folder for the specific um, flash cart that you're using, in this case, it's a 64 drive one. So now that that's loaded um, and we have that ready, we can go to our 64 drive batch files and N64 um, for the NTSC batch files. Now we can pick and choose which one we want to use. Let's start off with the standard MIDI player. So now if we double click on this, it's just going to open up a DOS prompt. Now this is going to take like 10 seconds to transfer and it's going to transfer our MIDI edit file. Uh, directly over to the N64 uh, on the 64 drive flash cartridge. So all you got to do is make sure that your USB is connected and you can leave the N64 off with the 64 drive. It doesn't really matter. So we'll just hit enter here and you can see it just quickly runs through and there that's done. So right now that MIDI file was transferred over to the 64 drive and it's ready for us to test. Turn on the console. And there we have the N64 standard MIDI file player. And that is a version 3.8 that I've created. Um, and that's the standard MIDI player. And you'll see a whole bunch of, you'll have a series of information on the screen there. So it's just got a whole bunch of the uh, buffer uh, variables and that's just sort of the information. It doesn't really change, um, but it's just to give you some information uh, on how my sequence player works. Uh, and then basically you have the A and B buttons to start and stop the MIDI file. Um, and then off to the side in the yellow text, that's the sort of the offset values, which is the location on our ROM of where the information is stored. And so in our case for the MIDI file, that's the .spk uh, information and that file uh, is where our MIDI file is stored. So that hexadecimal number um, where the SBK uh, file, where it shows that offset value, that's the specific address of where our MIDI file is located in this demo ROM that I've created for you. But again, if you're, if you're someone that's like a musician and you're not really into the programming side of things, you can just completely ignore all this information. You don't even have to worry about it. And all you have to do is press A or B, and that's just going to play or stop the MIDI file. So let's hit the uh, play button there. So we're going to hit uh, the B button. And there you go. It's cycling through all three versions of that. And there we go. And that's done. And that was just that one sort of test track that I created. So now if we were to go back to our, our editing software, so we go back to our MIDI uh, edit and just start fresh. And then we were to go and load a MIDI track that we have. So say for instance, we have this Sonic uh, file. Now we're gonna load this track, which is kind of ironic. We're running on a Nintendo N64, which is just kind of cool, I thought. Uh, so you can see it's a pretty elaborate uh, MIDI file. Uh, and this is Green Hill Zone. Just for Now this is just for demonstration purposes, educational purposes here. So now if we were to go and, and save this, so we go save as, and we were to save it over top of our sort of temporary edit file, so the media edit files, we would save and overwrite that. 
So now that's saved as that edit file, which is what our batch file is actually looking to transfer over to the 64 drive. And we were to go back to our batch files and for the standard MIDI player. And uh, let's, let's actually run the compact MIDI player this time. So we were to double click on that. Now when you double click on yours, when you have it, it's just gonna run immediately, very quickly, 10 seconds. So we'll hit enter here. And there, it's done. It's just transferred. Now the, now the 64 drive has a really fast USB interface, so it's really quick um, compared to the uh, EverDrive 64, which is a little bit slower because it's using a virtual COM port over USB. So it's a little slower, but it still performs the same function. So now if we go back to our N64 with the 64 drive and reset the console, you'll notice that the ROM that's loaded, uh, it indicates N64 compact MIDI file player version 3.7. So that's the difference between the two. But again, they, they perform the same function. All you have to do is hit A or B and it'll play or stop the file. So let's hit the uh, B button to play. And there you go. You get the point, right? It's playing through that MIDI track. Okay. Sonic on the Nintendo N64. <laughs> That's kind of cool, right? Um, but again, anyway, so again, these samples that you're hearing, the MIDI track is actually playing sound samples that are saved on my little ROM here that I've created. And as you can see at the bottom, it says uh, default MIDI bank, uh, which is Gen MIDI 44K. And that's a generic uh, bank of samples that was generated by uh, the Nintendo, uh, you know, uh, development tools that we have there, the audio tools. And um, now eventually, again, we're going to be able to go and manipulate that and change things around. Uh, but that's still in development and that'll be in a future video. Um, so that's it guys, it's pretty cool. Uh, so let's switch over now. Uh, let's go back, we're gonna switch over. We'll change to the EverDrive 64 X7 model and I'll run those, but it's pretty much the same process. So we'll go to the EverDrive and we, again, we go to our batch files here and we have the NTSC and PAL versions. So we go to our NTSC. So now it works a little differently we have the EverDrive 64 X7 flash cartridge connected to the console and the console is powered on. So that's the difference with the EverDrive. The EverDrive 64, in order to use the USB interface, you have to have it powered on and you have to be at the boot up EverDrive 64 menu. So if you see that on your television uh, and you see the EverDrive 64 menu, you're good to go. Now the uh, USB interface is ready to accept some commands. But if you load uh, a ROM uh, and then you try to run a USB command, it's actually gonna, it's not gonna work. So I've implemented some warnings in the batch file in case you forget and just so you don't think it's broken or anything. So we'll demo that. I'll just show you guys. So my EverDrive is loaded and ready to go. Okay, so if we navigate to our EverDrive folder under the uh, N64 MIDI files and we load our scale again, right? We have that all ready to go. So we save that, save as over top. We're in, again, we're in the EverDrive 64 this time under MIDI files and we save it as our MIDI edit file. Overwrite that with this sort of test ROM that I've created, the scales. And then we go back to our batch files and we'll choose the compact one this time for the EverDrive. And we double click on that. It's gonna perform the transfer here. So as you can see, it's a little slower. And that's again, because the EverDrive uses a virtual COM port and it's, uh, it's just, a, it's running things a little, a little delayed. So there it's transferred and right away it should boot up and you'll see N64 compact MIDI player, the same as it did with the 64 drive. And so if we hit play there, yep, same process, same as we did before, but we're gonna load the Sonic one. 
right? There's our sonic file. Zoom out here. And then again, save it. So now this is our active editing file. And we load the standard for the EverDrive. So we double click on that. And again, it's a little slow. Oh, now there, there's the error and you're gonna see this. Now, why did we get this? Well, as it indicates, it's because the menu, the boot menu screen for the EverDrive wasn't detected. It's because we've loaded a ROM and the ROM is still loaded and playing. So you actually have to power cycle the um, N64 with the EverDrive inserted to bring, to, re to bring back that EverDrive menu. And then once you're at that EverDrive menu, the boot menu, you can hit enter on your keyboard and it should perform that without any issue. And again, as you can see, it's a lot slower. And that's again, just simply because they're using a virtual COM port and everything's being transferred serially. So there it is. And then it should automatically boot up and there we have it. We have the N64 standard MIDI file player version 3.8. And again, you hit A and B. And there it's running the Sonic track. Yeah, you get the point, right? And so that's it guys, that's today's video. So using either the 64 drive or the EverDrive 64 for doing a MIDI previewing on the N64 console. So as long as you got one of those two cartridges, you're good to go. So if you're the MIDI uh, fanatic and you're a musician type and you're into you know, DJing and doing all that MIDI sampling, sequencing and that type of thing and sort of music uh, MIDI editing is your, your forte then this is something that you might want to test out and get your hands on a, an EverDrive X7 model and uh, start messing around hearing that old school uh, Nintendo 64 uh, MIDI sound effects and MIDI soundtracks. So that's, it's kind of a cool thing, it's pretty neat. So that's it guys, that's today's video. Thanks so much for watching and hit the like and subscribe if you guys can, it's always appreciated. And we will see you guys in the next video. So take it easy, ciao.